Good morning, guys. I miss you terribly, and I cannot wait to see you again. Um, I hope that you had a good week and that you're doing well. Jackson, I heard you had an interesting week, and I just want you to know that I've been praying for you, and I hope that your arm heals quickly and that you'll be back to doing your own math homework in no time. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you we're going to do things a little bit differently today. We are not going to review every single name of God that we've learned so far in this lesson, but I am sending a worksheet to your parents that you can fill out after the lesson, and I'll show that to you now. It has two columns. The first side, it has the names of God that you've learned so far, and then it has meanings of the names of God. And so you're just going to write the letter of the meaning next to the correct name of God. And then down below are two Bible verses that I want you to look up. You can have a sword drill with one of your siblings nearby, or you can just look them up on your own. And I want you to write them out. They're both in the book of Luke. Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? If you said New Testament, you are correct. Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's the third book of the New Testament. And the verses you're going to be looking up tie into what we're learning today. Okay, so before we get started, let's pray. Please fold your hands and bow your head with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you are who you are. And thank you that we can know you through your word. Thank you that you are Jehovah El Emet, the Lord God of truth, that we can trust your word because every single word of yours is true. Lord, thank you that you are God Almighty, that you are El Shaddai, that nothing is too hard for you. Lord, I pray that you would open our minds and that you would give us understanding as we study who you are today, Lord. And I pray that you would give us the desire to obey you and to know you and to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, are you guys ready for the new name of God we're going to be learning today? I have um, a shorter PowerPoint that's going to walk us through that. Adonai is the new Hebrew name of God that we're going to be studying today. And Pastor Marshall shared with me what Adonai looks like in Hebrew. So if this copied correctly from the email, this is what the name Adonai looks like in the Hebrew language. And who knows, maybe God might call some of you into the ministry and you might be studying this language and then you can come back and teach the first and second grade Sunday school class all the different names in Hebrew and show us what they look like. Hebrew, or the Hebrew word for Adonai means Lord. So wait a minute, I thought that Yahweh meant Lord. And now you're saying that Adonai means Lord too? So what's the difference between Lord and Lord? Well, I am so glad you asked. That's a great question. So Lord with the capital letters versus Lord with the lowercase letters. So Lord with the capital letters, Yahweh, it represents the fullness and the completion of God. God is self-existent and unchanging, and there's none like him. Lord Adonai, that we're going to be studying today, this name is used to address God in relational terms. It means that God is my Lord. It shows that God is master or in charge of us. Wouldn't it be strange if you were drawing, say you had a, a brown crayon, and you were drawing a dog? And your crayon jumped out of your hand and said, I don't want to draw a dog. I want to draw a house. That would be really strange, wouldn't it? It'd be strange for a couple of reasons. Number one, crayons don't talk. And number two, you are the owner of the crayon. And you get to decide what the crayon draws, right? Well, the Bible uses the same kind of strange illustration to show us how foolish and wrong it is for us to think that we should be in charge instead of God. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 9. Woe to him who strives with him who formed him. A pot among earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or your work has no handles. Clay is a little bit like Play-Doh. You get to squish it and you get to form figures and make things with it. 
Well, clay does not get to decide what kind of pot it gets made into, does it? It doesn't get to say, you should have given me handles. The owner of the clay gets to decide everything about the clay, about the pot and how it's made. God made us and he made the whole world and everything in it. He owns everything. He gets to decide what to do with everything in his world. Lord is a title and it shows that someone is the owner of something. The Hebrew way of saying Lord is Adonai. God is Adonai. He is the owner of everything. God is a good owner. He always does what's good. He loves us and he gives us what we need. He takes care of us and he takes care of the whole world. So if God is the owner of us and the owner of all things, should we be like the crayon or the pot and say, no, don't do this? Should we say that to God? Or should we be like Jonah who ran away from Nineveh when God told him to go there? Or should we be like Mary? This is what Mary said in Luke. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. We read that in Luke 1 verse 38. That's one of the verses I want you to write out. Mary understood God as Adonai, the Lord, and that she was his servant to do whatever he said. Sometimes we don't feel like obeying God. Sometimes what he tells us to do is hard or it doesn't seem like a good idea to us. But you know what? We're not Adonai. We're not the Lord. God is. He is always right and he is always good. He is El Elyon, the Lord Most High. He rules the whole world. He is Jehovah El Emet, the Lord God of truth. So he is never wrong. No matter how we feel or no matter what we think, we must obey Adonai. We need to be like Simon. Have you guys heard of Simon before? Well, you're going to write out some verse, a verse um, having to do with Simon today. Simon and the other fishermen, they had been fishing all night and they were washing their nets. They were tired, they were maybe hungry, they didn't catch any fish. They might have even be a little they might have even been a little bit upset because they worked really hard and they didn't come back with any fish. But Jesus got into Simon's boat and she, he began to teach the people. This is what he said in Luke 5 verse 4. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, "Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch." Wait a minute. Did Jesus make a mistake? It was not the time for fishing. The fishermen were tired and there weren't any fish. How would Simon answer Jesus? This is what he said, Luke 5 verse 5. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. Simon knew how to catch fish. That's what he did for a living. He knew that it was not the right time for fishing. He and the other fishermen, they were tired. But what did he call Jesus? Did you catch that? He called Jesus master. A master is an owner. Servants do what masters tell them to do. Jesus is the master. Just like the father, he too is Lord. He is Adonai. So this is what Simon said. Let's finish reading the rest of that verse. Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. At your word. Simon knew that Jesus was Lord. Simon knew that Jesus was the owner of Simon. The fisherman, the fish, the boat, the owner of you, the owner of me, and the owner of the whole world. So Simon obeyed Jesus, master. Do you know what happened when Simon obeyed Jesus? He rode out to the deep. He put down his nets and Jesus made the fish swim into his net. There were so many fish that the nets started to break. Simon knew that Jesus truly is the master, the owner of all things. Jesus is different from anyone else. Did you know that about Jesus? Do you have a heart that says, at your word, I will do what you say? I will do what's right even when I don't feel like it or even when I don't understand. I will follow your laws 
even when others won't. Whatever you say, Lord, I will obey because you are Adonai, the Lord, and I am your servant. Do you guys obey those who are in charge of you? Do you obey your parents? Did you know that when you obey your parents, you're actually obeying God? What does it say about your heart when you disobey them? Are you loving God as Adonai, Lord and Master? We're going to pray for a heart that says, I will obey your word. So please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please give us a heart that desires to obey you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So right now we're going to sing two songs that talk about obedience. Because obedience flows out of a heart that says, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. So the first song we're going to sing is Obedience. And if it works correctly, I'm going to put the words on the screen, but then I'll be in the corner in a little box and I'll do the signs that we've learned to the song so far. And then the second song we're going to sing is Trust and Obey. And then I will look forward to seeing you. Well, I won't be able to see you. You'll be able to see me next week. But before too long, I pray that restrictions are lifted and that we can see each other face to face very soon. So please join me in singing.
guys have a great week.